Hello and welcome. I want to show you how to create multis. Multis can be used for a variety of things like tabletop games, dice games, a roulette game, could be two creatures fighting each other and anything you can think of. What you see here is a checkers game played between two participants. The rules of the game are explained in this readable here. Let's start off by creating a multi from scratch. You want to hit create in an area where you can edit and hit Control F to search for multi. Let's name this table. I start out by picking a brown color and hit S for symmetry. I will draw this much faster than I usually would just for sample purposes. Okay, so this is the tabletop and this is the back side which acts like a wallpaper later. Let me add some highlights here. I hit save, drag this into the world. Now I walk over it and hit space. You can see it opens. I'm not yet in edit mode, but I want to switch to set up statics or set up movables. Let's say we want to create a card game, so we want to have some movable cards on top of the table here. I click set up movables and as long as I'm in the movable edit mode, you can see a little border around the table here. I prepared some cards already, which I will just drag onto the table now. That's good, I click done and everybody who opens this table can now move the things around. A single click on them will turn around the changing thing. And that's because I drew the changing things with two sides. One is the front side and the second is the back side. Now in typical card games you want to have a hidden hand. How do we do that? I click table, click more and now I can say has participant sections here. This means that any card that I drag into somebody else's section will show its back side. But to them it will show the front side. Switching to the me side, I will see the front side, the back side, the front side, and this is the zone where everybody can see the front side. Now, how about shuffling? Just click has neutral section, and now whatever you drag into this section will be automatically shuffled. Let's say I have the case here, shuffle, 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 put it back, turn it around. So that's how you play a card game now. Maybe you want to play a dice game. Let me just close this. I prepared some dice already so I will show you what they look like. Let me drag this here to clone it. So this consists of six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I drew in the dots for each number. Now importantly you want to give it a range at the end of the name. So I give it the range one to six. This means it can have any of these six states. And if you look at the dynamic code, for each state there's a marker here, a label. And each label shows the cell of the state. State 2 shows the second cell, for example. Plus there's a randomization state. And the randomization will rotate the dice whenever it's on a randomizer. I will show you what a randomizer is in a second. So, let's drag this here, go into movables edit mode. When I click it one time, it will switch its state, its number. If I hit Ctrl D, I can multiply it. So now I have five dice. I'm done editing the movables. Now I want to have a little dice shaker cup. I prepared one already and I will, I will show you what it looks like. So this is the drawing, it's a dynamic. This time, importantly, it has the randomizer attribute ticked. It 
that its base state it will just show itself, but when you randomize it, it will do a little rotating left and right animation. Okay, let's drag this onto the table as a static this time. I'm done. And I move this on top of it and you can see it looks like a dice is being randomized, is being shuffled or shaken. The randomized state will trigger whenever something with a range will be dropped onto it. What else could we create? We could create a roulette wheel. I prepared something here. Let me show you the roulette wheel setup. It's a very basic wheel which does not have uh, the, the odd and even state colors or anything yet. It's just a spinning ball for now. So in the third cell we have the spinning ball, in the second cell we have an empty cell for text and in the first one we have the wheel itself. And we give it a range, let's say 0 to 36. And you can see in the first cell there will be a text, but the text doesn't say anything like hello, but instead it uses a variable state. So this will show whatever the randomization comes up with. Since we defined the number range to be from 0 to 36, it will be any number between those. And during the randomization state it will rotate the ball around its pivot. The pivot here is 1414, which if we go to the center here and hit P is what we, what we get as coordinates. Okay, let's hit save, open the table again, drag the wheel here, set it, uh, set it up as a static. And what happens when I click this now? It will roll the ball and randomize it. You can imagine that you could have a full roulette board here set up as statics, plus maybe some chips as movables. There's another way to maintain a number state for participants. Instead of chips, for example, you could have everybody have a starting number define the starting number here in the settings. Let's say we're using 100. I click done, now I have 100. To change this I can just do like me plus 10 and you can see it will switch to 110. I can also say me divided by 2 and now I got half of what I had. Or I say me times 2. I can also say fill times 3 and so on and so forth. You can find the full optional keywords on the manyland.com slash info minus multi info page. Now maybe I want to have two creatures fighting each other. First thing I want to do is I don't really need a table background for this. So I scroll down to the table background opacity and I set it to zero. Maybe during editing make it a bit higher. Now we keep the start value, maybe it's our health. We have a reveal mode, which is from center below. But we don't need the sections to be marked. And maybe it's a maximum participant limit of two. I hit done. Let me delete a lot of this stuff here. Now we want to have two creatures. I will make the creatures be dynamics and the dynamics will have two states. One is a neutral state and one is an aggression or attack state. I prepared this already here. Let me first show you the dynamic. This is the first cell and this is the aggression cell. Now what I'm doing here is just I have a base state here and I have a second state which shows the second cell. It could also be animated or anything you want. Here we are defining the state range again, so it has just two states. Let's drag it over here, set it up as a movable. We're done. And now when I click it, you can see it switches from basic to a text state. I'm not sure what game this could be, but you can think of anything. Let's have an enemy here, set it up as movable. We're done. And now me minus 100. Maybe this is my health. And now we have a little fighting game here. 
Now there's a lot of possibilities with multis and it's really limitless. You can think of any type of game you want to do, a word game, um, maybe a board game with your completely own layout and rules. One thing you want to do is when you want to explain the rules to people you can create a readable. Now readables have a few different side features when they're placed on a, on a table. Uh, sorry, on a multi. Let me first create a little background opacity again. Now let me create the... Let me empty the table. And now I prepared a little readable note. This is the Rotobot stats readable. Let's see what's inside. It just says health 100, mana 100. If I drag this into the board as a static, duplicate it. Then when it's in my own participant section, I can edit it. When it's in somebody else's participant sections, I can't even click it. When it's in a neutral zone, somewhere in the middle, then everybody can read it by clicking on it. Let's bring back the sections. Oh yeah, we have them. Okay, so clicking here, you can see I can edit this. 90. Next time I open it, it's still 90. This one I can click. And it will open it. And this could also be a rules page now. And if it's in another party section, clicking it won't reveal anything. So you saw a lot of uses for the tables. Let me quickly open up a finished checkers game and then I will show you how to set up the background for it. So let's explain all the parts uh, there are to this can see the background again which is green you have two participant sections but in this case I have set up the participant sections to be a little bit to the side using the section positions feature furthermore I added a little thing with transparency to the sides you can rotate by moving and right clicking as usual let's try this quickly this duplicate move it right click you can see this is how I can set up a board and I have a little dynamic here which is a shade which is an eight cell shade and I created another dynamic to the lower parts there's a little grid here and this will have a snap to grid feature in the settings this means that when I drag the tile and I let it go, it will snap to the grid that it's in. Let me quickly show you how this is done. I hit the more button. Now I hit... Let me first hit Control G here actually, and this way I can easier see the grid. Hit the more button. Now you can see the snap to grid feature here, and I defined it to be going from 5 left, top 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to top 0, 1 and I defined it to go at a width and height of 8 grid blocks so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 8 down so this means when I move it here nothing will snap when I move it here it will fall into its closest cell here's the little readable now I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, there's a lot that stays explained on the info page where you can have much more details. There's many ways to fine tune the multis and I'm curious what you will come up with. So see you in many lands.